YouTube, Edgar here, and welcome to Artifexy, and here you will learn everything you ever wanted to know about world building, and then some. Let's put those gas giants we've been building into orbit. First up, hot Jupiters. Semi-major axis. In terms of planetary orbits, the semi-major axis A is essentially going to be the distance from our planet to its star, aka the average separation between the two bodies. To ensure our hot Jupiter is actually a hot Jupiter, A has to be between 0.04 and 0.5 AU. I'll go with 0.05 AU. Eccentricity. Orbital eccentricity values go from 0 to 1. Hot Jupiters have very circular orbits, so our eccentricity needs to be extremely close to 0 without actually being 0. In general, 0 with 1 to 2 zeros after the decimal point is a good ballpark to be in. I'll go with an orbital eccentricity of 0.02. Semi-minor axis. This is the equation of an ellipse, useful for graphing our orbits. Whilst we know A, our semi-major axis, aka the average separation between our hot Jupiter and its star, we don't know B, the semi-minor axis. B is given by A, the semi-major axis, multiplied by the square root of 1 minus the eccentricity squared. Remember, we set A at 0.05 AU and E at 0.02. Therefore, B will equal 0.04998 AU. Now we know both A and B values, we can graph our orbit, and it ends up looking a little something like this. Periapsis. The periapsis, the point at which our hot Jupiter will be closest to its star, is given by A, the semi-major axis, multiplied by 1 minus the eccentricity. So in this case, 0.05 AU multiplied by 1 minus 0.02, giving us a periapsis at 0.049 AU. Apoapsis. The apoapsis, the point at which our hot Jupiter will be furthest from its star, is given by A, the semi-major axis, multiplied by 1 plus the eccentricity. Again, in this case, we have 0.05 AU multiplied by 1 plus 0.02. Thus, our apoapsis will be at 0.051 AU. So to recap, our hot Jupiter orbits its star at 0.05 AU, the eccentricity of its orbit is 0.02, and as such, the closest it comes to its star is 0.049 AU, and the furthest, 0.051 AU. Got it? Cool. Orbital period. And now for the bit that really matters when it comes to world building. The orbital period or year length is given by the square root of a cubed divided by m, where a is a semi-major axis and m is the mass of our star. So let's say our star here has a mass of 1.1 solar masses. Plug in the numbers and we get a year of 0.01 Earth years, or in other words, 3.98 Earth days. And this is typical of hot Jupiters. Look for orbital periods in the order of days, not years. Oh, and FYI, the lower limit for hot Jupiter years is three Earth days. Orbital velocity. So given that our hot Jupiter orbits so close to its star, it must be orbiting at a serious speed. This speed or orbital velocity is given by the square root of m divided by r, where m is the mass of our star and r is the average separation. So the semi-major axis. Run the numbers and we get a value of 4.69 times the Earth's orbital velocity. Which, when multiplied by the Earth's velocity, 29.78 kilometers per second, tells us that our hot Jupiter zips around its star at a staggering 139.68 kilometers per second. Inclination. So orbital inclination is a measure of how tilted an orbit is. Most orbits are prograde, that is they orbit in the same direction as their star. Prograde orbits lie between 0 and 90 degrees. Between 90 and 180 degrees, orbits become retrograde, i.e. they orbit in the opposite direction to their star. Most planets orbit in a prograde fashion, but a unique quirk of hot Jupiters is that half of them orbit prograde, the other half retrograde. So we're free to simply pick any number between 0 and 180 degrees, right? Eh, uh, technically yes, but for extra added realism, keep your orbits within 10 degrees of your reference plane. So let's give our hot Jupiter a retrograde orbit inclined at 172.9 degrees. Now, if you're doing pen and paper world building, you can stop here. This is all the info you will need, but if you're rendering your system in three dimensions, keep watching. Longitude of the ascending node and argument of periapsis. Into Universe Sandbox, we go to define our orbit in 3D space. 
FYI, Universe Sandbox is a great orbital simulator and I strongly recommend buying it. Links in the doobly-doo. Anyways, let's place our star here and set its mass at 1.1 solar masses. Next, let's select the gas giant, place it and start filling in the fields we've already calculated. So semi-major axis is 0.05 AU, eccentricity is 0.02 and inclination 172.9 degrees. And now for the longitude of the ascending node and argument of periapsis. In its simplest terms, both values can range between 0 and 360 degrees and basically we are free to choose whatever values we wish. I'm going to set my longitude of the ascending node at 100 degrees and the argument of periapsis at 30 degrees. Now watch what happens when I do this. Here's the longitude of the ascending node and here's the argument of periapsis. Essentially what I'm doing here is defining how the orbit is orientated in 3D space. Now let's run the simulation. Pretty cool, eh? Oh, and for context, here's the Earth's orbit. Click the system for a more in-depth video on these orbital elements. Addendum. A final note, although I've been banging on about hot Jupiters, this method can also be applied to hot Neptunes and hot Saturns. These three types of gas giant differ physically, not orbitally. So there you have it, everything you ever wanted to know about putting your hot Jupiters, hot Neptunes and hot Saturns into orbit. Guys, if you like what you see here in Artifact Scene, click the links in the description to find me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're interested, hit like and subscribe for more awesome science-based world building. Thank you all so much for watching. Edgar out.